afternoon, people. As Aliana mentioned, my name is Jorge Vargas. I'm Java developer almost with more than 10 years of experience with Subserve here in Latin America, more than one year I've been working. It's like a new experience for us in order to try to share this kind of knowledge for you team. I know that most of them you are located in Ukraine. So thank you very much for having me this afternoon and this great opportunity. Uh, in this afternoon or this morning or whenever you can see this recording, we want to try to talk a little bit about the code reviews. It's not like a technical presentation. I just wanted to share a little bit about my experience trying to work as a Java developer, also a developer, because it's not only linked with Java. Trying to explain a little bit about the process that we need to run or the things that I've learned when I try to press to, to practice this kind of uh, um, tasks or activities in our projects. Um, before to start talking about the code reviews, I just wanted to share that we are part of the Java community. Uh, so this is like a, a interactive, interesting practices in when you can find useful information about several topics. As I mentioned, my main goal is try to share about the Java community. But if you can you can check the conference page, you can see a different recordings, a different demos presentation about other different topics. For example, the Spring, for example, Apache Kafka, Apache Flux, for example, about reactive integrations or applications. So if you can find useful this kind of information, you wanna try to check about this kind of information in the Java community page or other pages, the Bob, Go, um, Project Management Institute and other different things. So this is also like an open invitation that check the conference page, check the old records. And also if you have another important information that you wanted to share, this is also an open invitation that you can be with us in this kind of initiatives and share uh, and knowledge, no matter if it's expert, junior, or in middle, no matter what language or what uh, information you wanted to share, you are open to be with us. Um, <clears throat> so the agenda for today, we wanna try to talk a little bit about what is agile development or what I understand as agile development. Also, we want to try to talk a little bit about the code reviews indeed, uh, two different point of views about the code reviews, about the reviewer, about the team, about the writers, and also a couple of recommendations that uh, probably you already know. If not, uh, some ideas that I can share about the things that I notice when I try to practice with code reviews. So in order to make like a quick uh, warm up, uh, try to open your microphones or your chat windows and try to share some ideas about what agile development means for you. So probably you are developer, you have been working in different projects. So I, ju I just wanted to make like a question, what agile development means for you? Don't be afraid, there is no wrong answer. I think it's great. It greatly depends on the project, and can okay. have various meanings. Uh, so yeah, I, I think we can, we can come up with several uh, explanations. But for me, the agile means agile. So you you uh, you, you adjust your development uh, depending on the on 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 the current load task uh, sphere. Uh, where where you where you are working on something like this? Perfect, Andrew. That's perfectly nice. Another opinion, another suggestion. Constant changes. Yeah, great. Thank you, Vladimir. So, when we are talking about agile development, several ideas come to my mind. As you mentioned, it agile. And agile means, for example, to include like a Scrum master or like a Scrum guide in our projects. But 
It means uh, that we are practicing agile development indeed. Probably we are just adding noise in our projects or like a bottlenecks in order to make another activities in order, in order to make another type of tasks that eventually we are not conscious that we'll try to make like a goal in our projects. So in, in order to talk about that one uh, or in order to understand what agile development means and other things appear like, a, for example, to have like a backlogs or define activities or define like a, things like an, a scrum plan or uh, daily meetings or something like that. So those are things associated with the methodology, with the plan of preparation in order to make activities, but indeed are not linked with a child development. Another thing could be, for example, try to link our daily activities with like a scrum. But I mean, again, this is like a framework. This is another way to make, uh, try to do like as activities, recall uh, years ago that we were trying to do things like uh, in, a, uh, for example, and in another different ways, uh, try to plan, try to make uh, like a uh, design, try to uh, schedule uh, a couple of minutes, but indeed probably is not like uh, the agile development we are talking to do. Also, uh, uh, we were talking about agile and agile also are linked about the speed, the velocity. But again, velocity doesn't mean agile development. Probably when we're working and when we are trying to make a, like a trace about the project status, we are thinking that one sprint, the speed or the velocity was one number, five or seven or eight. But if we change our project, if we change the methodology, we change the team or the APIs or the libraries that we need to do, probably the velocity or the speed is the, is the different number. So talking about the, the agile development, uh, one thing that I'm trying to be hard linked is about the feedback. So what is feedback linked with agile development? is the possibility to make change faster. I mean, to receive the feedback, to apply this feedback in our projects and to adapt our projects, our source code, our methodologies, our team, based it in those feedback. That's the, uh, the, the main idea behind agile development needs. So there are several types about what type of feedback we can receive in our projects. So one of the most usual way to, to get feedback is try to get contact with the user. For example, to know how the user, how the user fills the applications, how the user run the application, is useful the application for the user, or probably we are trying to do one different thing that probably is not useful for the final user. So try to analyze if the assumptions that we are having are right or wrong. This is kind of the feedback that eventually we need to figure out and we need to, or, or we need to get from the different users in our perspective. So one type of the feedback uh, that eventually we need to receive or I should recommend is uh, to get a feedback for the, the final user, the active user that is attending or is, uh, is getting the application. So when, when we analyze what is the behavior of the application and when we present or demo the application to the user, probably we can put like a ponies in the nature. So the idea is try to use like a real feedback, like a real demo, real presentation, no matter if there are problems in our code or in application. So for example, try to imagine that we are, for example, in the middle of the forest and we wanted to go to one specific point, one city, for example, comes to my mind, for example, Las Vegas. So you open your cell phone, you open your GPS, Google Maps or Waze, and that map shows to you like a real feedback. So you need to walk one kilometer, 
the estimated arrival time it could be one hour or two hours. The kilometers uh, are uh, linked with the gas consumption. So you need to have like a 10 liters for, of gas in order to arrive to your destination. That's a real feedback. If we compare years ago when we don't have this kind of maps, probably we don't have this kind of feedback. So you just open the map in a paper and the map just say that you are located here in one specific point and you need to go in one direction, north, east, west, or south, and that's it. But you don't have that specific feedback. So this is the things that I recommend to, to, to have these kind of situations, a real feedback with the user. So one type of feedback associated with agile development. Another type of feedback that we need to receive or I usually recommend is about the testing, the automation testing. So when I heard about the automation testing, it's like, a, for example, one friend said, it's like an angels or demons behind our shoulders. So when I run some specific code, I push my code to the repo and the test automatically run, I can notice if my code will work or will break something. So this is like how the angels behind of my shoulder that say me that I'm like a good developer and I'm like a, the, 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 the bad developer, the worst developer in the world. So the, the, uh, the, the testing, the automation testing help me to get like a feedback in order to say, okay, we are doing something great or we are breaking uh, different things in our teams. And finally, and this is one or the main focus or the main goal about the conversation this afternoon is about the code reviews. I mean, code reviews can tell me about if we are not things about all the scenarios, all edge cases that we are facing in our source code. So the idea is try to be honest with our coworkers. So it's not just analyze the things that are in the source of the code. It's try to provide useful information about are you validate this scenario? What happened if you don't consider these situations? Uh, what happened in this scenario? Is useful this scenario in this edge case? So this is the ideas behind of the feedback associated with the code reviews. So when we're talking about the code reviews, we just need to analyze our current situations. For example, I ran a couple of projects years ago in which we were called like victims. I mean, for example, we had one day, Mondays in the morning, when the project manager requested to us to apply the code reviews. So we just hate the Mondays in the morning because every person in the team just analyzed the source code and blame and, and make critics for our source code. So we feel like, uh, like we were uh, babies in the garden. I don't want to go to the school because some people uh, will punish to me because I made something wrong in the code. Or for example, the project manager just requested to analyze the code because we need to push uh, our code in, in the master branch and nobody analyzes it. So we just feel at that time like a victims. So we need to switch this kind of considerations. Uh, move from the big things to the heroes. And I just I don't want to say heroes like a hero in the real world, like a Superman or something like that. No, the idea is try to make like a good thing work with our co-workers. Today, I will pair with you and then I will pair with you and I will switch. And I just want to someone else check uh, with me my source code. The idea is try to grow collectively and make like a better communication with the team. 
So the idea is try to avoid uh, the, the, the bad things about the code reviews and try to switch like a positive ways in order to make like a good communications in our team. So also when I try to think about the code reviews, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm with Benkat in these situations. To be honest with you, I am really good analyzing the code for other people. But to be honest with you, I'm not the best when coding. I'm good finding the, the, the fouls for other people. But uh, I think that when we try to put our, our hands in the mood, probably is the, way, the best way to understand and to learn about these kind of situations. So if we analyze the code of our coworkers, probably is the best benefit for all the team because we grew up as a team. We uh, analyze, we understand, we can to get more information about the things that are running behind of the code. We try to analyze and understand the designs plan for the code. Because I don't know if that's the real situation for you, but in the projects that I run, probably I didn't start it from the crash. Uh, my regular situation is that I just received a couple of code that has been wrote for several years and I need to make some adaptations and make uh, some new features. So the design, the proposals, the assumptions made for those design uh, were not planned for me. So I just need to try to analyze and understand the different things or different situations about the code. So code reviews needs to be a thing like uh, two parts. One is about the technical part and the other hand is about the social part. So yeah, one thing is about the APIs, the connections, the services, the design that is behind this is. But don't forget that the, the task, the, the, the code, the source code that you are analyzing has been wrote by some person. So don't forget that there is one person behind of the work that you are analyzing. So don't forget that because the idea is that we are just analyzing the code, but also we are trying to analyze that we are working with people. Uh, we are not alone against with the code. There are people behind of the scenes with emotions, uh, with goals, with problems uh, as, as, as we have today. So when we analyze the code, there are several benefits. Uh, for example, benefit, benefits for the writer. So you can, you can analyze that when you wrote the code, there are another different eyes that you can check and you can get a different opinions about the code. So for example, uh, have you checked these conditions? Have you checked these scenarios? Uh, did you consider these edge cases? Uh, what happened if A, B, or C situations happen in our code? So that's come to my mind that, okay, I've not analyzed this situation. So thank you very much for these considerations. Another thing uh, that I consider that, see, that is a benefit is about the readability of the code. So if the code is good to read, probably is a good compensation in order to make considerations about the source code. So if someone, if someone takes time to read and analyze and understand, it means that the risk of the maintenance in the, in the project is really low. Doesn't matter if it's complex because someone understands, someone reads, someone feels uh, the connection with the code. So the idea here is that make easier the code, make readable, and uh, moving forward, the risk of the maintenance is, is, is low. And another thing uh, linked about the benefits is about the, uh, the possibility to learn from the people. I mean, I can try to write some code, but someone say, hey, did you consider to use this API or why don't you use this algorithm? Because I think that is faster and make the application 
uh, work in a different way. So I say, mm, yeah, this is great because I didn't have, I didn't notice that this way can also work. So thank you very much for that one. So uh, it's, it's like uh, the possibility to learn from the people that are working for you. Also to have the, the, the humble possibility to get more knowledge. And I think that is the, the important thing when we are working in teams. We are not isolated. We need to work like a group. Another thing associated with the benefits is about the reviewer. So again, probably you don't understand the whole context of the, of the application. You didn't start it from the scratch of, of the application. So when you are working with the code, and you analyze in the code, if it's easy to read, you get more familiar of the, of the application. You know what are the design plans for, for these applications. You probably know or understand or get knowledge about the things that you eventually don't know. So you could, you could get more information about the libraries or the APIs or the service or the patterns that other people are trying to use. Also, you can provide useful information for your coworkers. So for example, in the middle, you could say, uh, remember that you need to use this service because if you don't use this service, there is uh, there could be like a bottleneck or you need to, to guarantee the transaction because A, B or C, or for example, uh, you need to, to make this consideration because in the design, you need to consider that you need to include uh, this transaction or, or something like that. So you help to your coworkers in order to understand the applications, in order to make easier and faster analyze the design of the applications. And also you are learning for the people that you are working with that. So you could analyze the source code from the others and say, mm, I didn't know that this API works in that way. So good catch. Thank you very much for that information. Also, there are another benefits. And I think that the biggest benefit is about the knowledge of the team. So for example, we as a team, we can grow in the knowledge. Uh, one thing that I consider that is the most benefit is that the, the ownership of the application. So I can make a change, another person can make a change. Uh, also, if we analyze the code, we can uh, we can guarantee that we can make a changes, for example, applying like a refactor. And if we do like a greater factor, the cost of change, the cost of maintenance in the future will be slow or will be low. So the idea is try to make our code great and also make the work easier for us or for the people that work with us in the future. Another thing linked with the benefit is about to reduce the boost or the track factor. I don't know if you know what is this uh, concept and the idea is to avoid that only one person uh, has the ownership of the code. So the idea is Try to analyze who is the responsible of the source code. I mean, if one person is responsible and understanding has the knowledge about the source code, what happened if that person is, I don't know, uh, get, win the lottery and uh, just uh, was removed from the team? Or in this case, uh, for example, uh, was hit by a boss or by a track and couldn't attend the meetings or couldn't make the changes in the future. So what happened? I faced a couple of projects years ago when someone has the entire knowledge and that person lived to vacations or quit the project. And at that time, the maintenance and the time in order to speed up the project was really slow because we don't have the opportunity to share this kind of knowledge. So the idea is try to reduce, in that case, the ownership, make collective ownership about the project, make easier to understand the, the, the projects indeed. 
try to understand not only the code, just the person that are behind of the scenes, try to understand the methodologies, try to understand the designs that are behind of the code. So a couple of things that I try to do when I am when I'm performing like a code review is uh, like a sequential steps. Okay, the first thing that I need to analyze when I'm trying to do a code review is, okay, is the code compiling? Because I don't want to waste your time and my time with things that are not compiling. So try to avoid these kind of situations. Just verify first that the code is working, the code is compiling, before to request like a code review. Another thing is, okay, are the tests running? Because one thing is that the code compiled, but I mean, the scenario that you made in order to, 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 to make a test for your code are working, are running. Did you include your uh, possible scenarios in order to make the code validate your source code? Also, did you include another type of scenarios like, uh, for example, linters or tool like a uh, PMD in order to validate a couple of things in your code? Things like, uh, for example, the, uh, the, the package names, the criteria, the scenarios that could be associated with some static tool analysis uh, associated with the tools. And also, if you wanted to have like a good or efficient uh, code review comments, the idea is to have like a, a good quality of code behind of the scenes. If you don't have, or you have poor quality of your code, probably you will receive a poor quality of your code reviews. So try to be detailed in order to make the analysis of the source code when you are writing or when, when you are analyzing the source code and after that, try to request this kind of considerations of your coworkers. So this is like a, the golden rule that I try to follow to, to start with the code reviews. So first of all, I analyze the test. So the first thing that I try to check when I check the code reviews is are test presence? If not, I'm asking in my mind, why are not test presence? Probably is like a bug fix. Okay, if it's a bug fix, why is not a test scenario with a bug fix? Uh, try to try to be conscious about that one. Include a test just to verify and analyze the scenarios that you eventually miss it in the past. We are people, we made mistakes is not a, 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 a guilty, is not a punishment, but uh, try to include the test when we are working in this kind of situations. Also, are the tests expressive? I mean, I read the test and it looks for me like a story. I set some kind of situations, I also validate some scenarios and I finally make some asserts about those scenarios. So that's the, the structure that I mentioned it here, like a AAA, arrange, act, and assert. I, I need try to analyze in the test scenarios, these kind of situations. Are, are we validating something? How we set these kind of scenarios? Um, also, it works like an evolutionary system. I mean, probably it is working, it is fine, but we are adding another feature. So it is evolving or we need to remove or we need to, to make a several adjustment in our source code. Also with the test, probably I can analyze if we are missing something. So do we include it again, another scenarios, another pathways, another edge cases that probably we miss it? If yes, uh, try to include or request to include those scenarios. If not, I think that we are okay. Uh, there are a couple of things that I analyze like a warning flags when we are trying to understand the code. So for example, 
if there is like a long code review, I mean, several lines of the code, several files in order to check, I mean, is that a real code review? Probably there is no enough time in order to review all of the lines code. So comes to my mind, is that a good time to have that a code review? Probably we started one week, one day, two days ago, before to make these assumptions today is it, it, it was good it it, it was uh, like a good consideration to have don't wait till you have like a feature already complete already done in order to make like a request for the code review also don't try to work then uh, to be honest with you I face this kind of situations today we try but but it's like a, a, a rule that eventually we had in our projects work like a TDD, you know, test driving development is like a treat driving development. Hey, George, I need to deliver this application or this feature today. Uh, why have, what, what happened with the code review? Um, I don't have time. Uh, I have another assignations. I can try to help you tomorrow. So why is not working the code review? Do it. So uh, we, we need to, to search the time for this kind of activities. Don't wait to the last time in order to make a request for approvals because the approvals indeed are not like a code review. The code review is, is the process, is not the final part. So when we're working with the people, we have uh, different considerations to have. We just need to think about that we are working uh, together as a team. So we just need to, to search like uh, considerations about to be adaptive, to avoid judge or blame people about the source code. So try to avoid this kind of situations. I don't have time. I don't want to make like a code review. I don't understand your code. I don't want to judge the people because it's only a part of our activities. I need to try to switch our mind uh, in order that it's better to learn about the source code. It's better to learn to be adaptive. It's easier for us in order to make consideration for the source code and also try to learn and also try to teach to the people about these kind of situations. So again, don't wait to the last time to make the, uh, the, the, the code reviews or request the code reviews. Again, recall a couple of projects a couple of years ago uh, when someone requests a code review and those code reviews contain several files, more than 50 and hundreds of hundreds of lines of code. So again, what are you looking for? Are you looking at code review? Are you looking at feedback or are you looking a blessing of the code? Because I, 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 don't, I don't have my mind focused analyzing this kind of thing. So it's better to start early and change our mind early and avoid to uh, demonstrate or show the errors at the end. Uh, what happened if we are doing, I'm trying to make this uh, service to connect with this another service. And someone say, mm, I guess that probably there is uh, another API that can work or can be or can fit for you. Don't waste your time in that way. You can use this library instead of, or, of, of the way that you are doing. Or for example, you are doing great. You are following the pattern that we plan to, to use for, for this uh, service integration in the beginning. So try to make the right questions at the right time. Don't wait till the end uh, to, to make these considerations. So again, it's like a, uh, tasks that we as a team need to, to work constantly and need to, to uh, perform em uh, eventually during our projects. So the idea is try to work in like a continuous improvement. Uh, don't wait 
till the end in order to have like a feedback because probably the feedback that you will receive is not the best one that you wanted to have. Um, another thing that I usually do is go beyond of the style codes. Probably the most usual way that we saw in our code reviews is, okay, are you using spaces or tabs? What are you using lower cases or upper cases in this method or in these variable names? So I, 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 I avoid these kind of situations. Uh, to be honest with you, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, just define in the beginning of the project, use tabs or use spaces and follow the pattern. Doesn't matter which one you already know. But for me, it's important to know, for example, the variable names. So uh, I, I recall one conversation that someone say and say, what is your what is your name? What is your child name? My child name is P and B and C. Why? Because you are a programmer. No, no, no. Just put like a variable names that you need to use. I don't want to say that use like long variable names, long method names. No, just like a short, descript descriptive and uh, efficient name in order to capture your attention and also to know what is the content about those methods and those variables. Also, try to analyze uh, the content of the methods and also the content of the class. It try to go with a different level of abstractions. I mean, if a method is uh, super long, uh, give me like a bad taste, a bad idea that probably we need to apply some abstraction in our code. Is the code easy to understand? If it's easy to understand, okay, we are in like a good path. If it's complex to understand, probably we are doing another different things. And obviously the risk of the maintenance is higher that we are starting. And also if we are adding code, we are adding more risk for our project. So if we can try to remove uh, 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 delete the things that eventually we don't need, or for example, apply a refactor in order to reduce the complexity of our code. That's the things that I'm trying to do. So those are linked with the concept that we notice or we already had in our minds that is about the cohesion and coupling. Are these concepts correctly applied in our source code? Probably is not easy to understand when we are working with the source code, but the idea is try to analyze, try to make like a good analysis of the code and try to understand better what is the functionality about that one. So if there is something associated with the books, okay, it's probably that books appear when we are doing like a code review. But again, uh, the idea is try to analyze the code, add the test link with the solution of the book. For example, in my case, if I feel that there is a book in my code, I try to write a test case link with that book. The, book, the, the test case needs to fail. If that fails, okay, we are in a good pathway. After that, I run a couple of scenarios, could be another test cases, or I can fix the source code uh, about the full work fixes. And after that, I can try to run more test scenarios. So if not, probably there are some scenarios that I need to add in our source code or our test cases. I recall one project when someone wrote a source code and I noticed that was something in the code that eventually failed, some missing edge cases. So I added a couple of test cases, not source code, just test cases, and certainly the, uh, the continuous integration, the Jenkins uh, just say warning because something was wrong. And the developer calls me, hey, George, uh, what happened? I noticed that you broke the code. And I say, no, I didn't broke the code. I just added one, one test scenario. So that guy say, mm, I'm thinking that you are trying to say something to me. 
And yes, I'm trying to say that there is a bug in your code. So we need to fix it. We need to add more scenarios. We need to think about the edge cases. We need to think about the other possibilities that can happen in our in our code and try to fix. So that's that's the things that I, I just wanna to share with you. And also working with the with the code reviews. Uh, my main goal is that we need to be or we need to try to be constructive. I mean, it's better to say, okay, there is something that is not working in your code, but we need to fix. Uh, it's, it's easier for us working as a team group to understand that we are people. Uh, it's better to save. Uh, there is something that is not working fine. This scenario has not considered. This method is long, but we need to fix or we can try to fix making like a refactor. We can explore this scenario or we can use this API instead of it's a, your code sucks. Uh, this code is terrible. You don't understand what we're trying to do. You didn't work like a team. So the idea is, okay, we are people, we are humans, we are we need to be humble because uh, trying to be negative is not the best thing for the teams. The idea is, okay, we are people, we had the possibility to make mistakes, but we as a team, we had the possibility to, con to be constructive. The idea is to be critical with our code, with our coworkers code, but in like a positive in a positive way. So for example, okay, let me share with you these kind of situations. I understand that this code did not work, but let's ch let check, let's have a pair with you in order to understand our different scenarios. I know that these conversations takes a long time probably, but it's better to have these connections with your coworkers instead of have like a bad critics in our source code. Uh, the idea with the code reviews is to be like a safe place for the coworkers. I mean, we don't want it to be negative about these kind of situations. The idea is to be confident that we can trust of the people. The idea is, okay, I know that you are doing a code review. I know that you make a critics of my code, but I don't want to... I don't want idea, please provide me some opinions. So yeah, 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 we can try to work. Why we don't use this API? Let's have a conversation. Let me pay with you about these kind of situations. Uh, the, the, the gossip in, in the middle of the projects don't makes better. The, the, the gossip in the middle of the project make us poor as people, make us poor of the team. The idea is I trust in our team. So for example, if someone say, okay, what do you think about the code of George? And I say, we are working. Uh, we are analyzing our code reviews. We are analyzing the source code. And that's it, he is trying to improve. But I don't want to say that, no, he is the worst person in the world. He doesn't have in his mind uh, the possibility or the clue to connect to line of source code. No, I don't want uh, these kind of things in our team. Because if I say these kind of things, I lose the trust in our team. When when you ask, uh, you want to have answers. So if you want to have a code reviews, probably I will answer to you. But you need to, to make the confidence and the truth that the, uh, the the answer, the knowledge that I will share with you is the best and also in the best possibility that I will share with you. Only with a positive criticism. And again, it's work for people, is working with people and people is, is, is not perfect. So the idea with code review is that we are not perfect people, we are not heroes, we are in the learning process. And the idea is that we need to try to check 
our source code, our technical details with difference, with uh, different errors, with different ideas. But that's the, the beauty of the human body. We are imperfect, but we are trying to help another people that also is imperfect. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is that try to be honest with your coworkers, try to be safe, to be safe, try to be confident, and try to be use your knowledge and try to learn from your coworkers. And that's it from today. I don't know if someone has some questions, some idea or some opinion about this presentation. Thank you, it was interesting. Uh, I have one comment uh, from my experience. Um, I uh, had technical leader from the client side. Uh, he's an American guy and he used to not, not only highlight the, the mistakes in the code, but also he used to highlight uh the good good sides good approaches so he was praising praising uh, people in this way and uh this is uh, perceived much much better than just a set of comments about uh, possible improvements or ideas so i i, I noticed it this, this was valuable for me and i am trying to apply this technique in in my practice when i am doing code review Correct, correct. That's that, that's the, the beauty of the things. I I feel that when we are constructive, I mean it, it doesn't mean that all code is perfect, your code is really good. No, no, no. When we have the opportunity to learn, to improve, to increase our knowledge, I think that that's the, the good possibility to learn. But we need to have uh, different ways to be constructive to be proactive, to be positive with our source code. I had several code reviews, I mean, several of several of comments, but when we have the opportunity to learn from the others, it's better for us because we are learning. It's, it's, the, it's the beauty of things. Uh, please, can you review my code? Because the last time that I saw your comment, I learned uh, different things. So it, it's important for me to have this conversation with the people. I mean, it's probably slow, it's probably a delay from the project, but if we wanted to grow as a team, uh, I think that it's important to have these conversations with our coworkers.